Hello, beautiful people. It's so great to see you guys again. My name is Karen from Close to Broke, and we have yet another episode. But before we get into that, there's a couple things I do want to mention, and trust me, they're quick and really important. So last video, I said, hey, man, get 250 likes in this video. I'd mean the world to me. And, you know, I thought that it'd be a tough one to get, to be honest. I was wrong. 250 likes? in the first 24 hours. You guys absolutely blew me out the water. We are now on pace to get 500 likes on that video. So I feel like a complete asshole. And honestly, I feel disappointed in myself because I should have known that you guys would come out and support way more than you guys did, or at least I thought you would. So on today's video, we have a goal, 500 likes. So if that means you make like five accounts just to like the video five times, I'm okay with that. Bless you guys from the bottom of my heart. I can't thank you guys enough for your support. It goes beyond me and our community is continuing to grow and it's all thanks to you, beautiful souls. God bless you guys. Run pure every day at the poker tables except when you play against me. You gotta be a little bit selfish in poker, right? Anyways, so the two big announcements that I wanna share in today's video before we get into the vlog, obviously, which is the only reason you guys are here really, is two big things. First, the giveaway. If you guys haven't heard about it already, we're gonna be giving away a huge package. We're gonna be backing one of you lovely folks in a WSOP bracelet event this fall. Yes, this year, the WSOP has been announced once again. We're gonna be paying for three nights hotel for you to stay in for free by yourself. We don't even have to share a bed. You're gonna be coming in on a flight, round trip, taken care of by us here at Close to Broke, as well as a tournament ticket where we'll be backing you, supporting you, coaching you up to make sure that this is an awesome, awesome opportunity for the both of us. If you need to learn more about that, because there's a way to enter, uh, you don't have to sign up to some weird Patreon or give me money. It doesn't work like that at all. It's completely free. Check out the link in the description. It's the very top link. You cannot miss it. The whole video goes into detail. Make sure you click on that and watch it after this video when you're done. The other big thing I want to mention is Meetup Game Time. Meetup Games. Can you believe it? I'm going to be hosting my first ever Meetup Game in July. We're looking at around the first week of July-ish, somewhere in that time. So I know there's like 31 odd days or something like that in July. So it's kind of ridiculous for me to be like, hey, can you keep some time free? But maybe try to keep like a Friday or Saturday free in July for us. And then the most important thing, guys, please, 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 please do this for me. It mean the world to me. Comment down below your home state, your home city, where you live now, obviously, and the home casino of your choice. It's the easiest way to, for me to be able to tell where the bulk of my community is, where the bulk of our C2B family is, where, do you, where are you guys at? Where should I take the rodeo? Where should we go? Because we want to fill up whatever casino we choose to go to. And the only way that's possible is if I can get a better understanding of where you guys are from. Anyways, enough me yippering and yapping on. Let's get to the main part of this video in what is one of the most fun sessions and frustrating sessions and badly played sessions that I've ever been a part of on this vlog. I hope you guys enjoy. Until the next one, we'll see you guys at the end of this video. Peace. Well, 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 we're back at the table, and as you guys can see, there's no vlog inception for this one, but I don't know what the hell's been going on, but the last three sessions we have been put in quite the pickle, quite the predicament, I may say, and this session is no different on the very first hand. The last three sessions, every time I sat down, the very first hand, haven't even got my chips in order, haven't got anything situated, we've had to pick up insane situations, and like I said, this is no different at all. Under the gun decides to raise here to $35. We're playing 5, 10, 1500 max. And that's where I am at the moment, which I am the effective stack. I look down at Ace King offsuit in the low jack and decide to raise it up here to three bet it. I go ahead and do just that, making it $110. It gets over to the button who looks at his hand and thinks about it for a little while. Definitely a reg, seems like a decent reg as well. 
He thinks about it for a little bit and decides on a four bet. Four bets into $270. It folds back to me. And again, considering this is a situation where we're at that weird phase where I'm not too positive exactly what the optimal play is in the sizing wise, but definitely left with a very strange stack to pot ratio. The one thing I am definitely considering here is whether I just want to jam, whether I want a five bet, whether I just want to call. Obviously folding's out of the question here. Our hand is obviously far too strong. And after thinking for a little bit, I think that considering it's very early in the session, a lot of these players don't have any reads on me. I don't have reads on them. I think five betting with the intention on getting it in is totally fine. So I go ahead and do just that. I raise it again, five betted pre-flop on the very first hand. Cannot make this shit up to $800, leave myself exactly $700 behind. And he goes well in the tank. He thinks about it for a bit and decides on a reluctant fold. So unfortunate, uh, we can get any more money there, but obviously getting, getting 30 big blinds pre-flop with ace high is always gonna be great for us. So moving right along. Okay, we are now playing about six handed. It folds to me on the button. I look down at king three of clubs. I go ahead and open this to $35. Everyone folds obviously except for the big blind. The flop is queen four six. One heart, two clubs, we flop ourselves the king high flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. It checks over to me. I don't think there's many options here besides C betting and I go ahead and do just that. I want to size to around 60 to 70% pot, which I do, betting $55. The big blind pretty quickly decides to make the call. The turn is an interesting card, giving us a little more equity. It is a three. The gentleman in the big blind decides to check once again. And once it gets to me, I don't think there's much to do here besides bet. At the time, looking back on it, I think this is a pretty obvious check back here. Now that we have some showdown value, there are some combinations of hands that we can still beat. And not only that, considering not much has changed from the flop and the turn besides, I think, a straight draw getting there, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not really getting any folds from better hands. So in the... In hindsight, I hate this bet. It doesn't make much sense to me. But at the moment, I feel like there's nothing more to do besides build a pot because now I have a pair I'm adding to my equity, which I do. I bet $125. The big blind, to my surprise, decides to raise me. He goes ahead and raises to $300. For $175 more, there's just no way I can fold with the amount of equity I have in the hand. If all of my outs are true, meaning I have my nine uh, flush outs and then the two pair outs, I probably have like 30% in the hand at the very least. So with all that being considered, I go ahead and make the call. The river is an absolute blank. It's like an eight or something. And the gentleman decides to check it over to me. And I don't think there's much to do here besides just check it back. And he goes ahead and shows us queen, nine of diamonds. So I guess he just, you know, I'm obviously not playing my best right now. And him showing me a queen with a shitty kicker and being able to raise a turn is a little unfortunate and just shows that my bet is horrendous in the long run. And we just got to learn from that. To be honest, I do want to stress this. This is really important. This has to be one of the worst tables I have ever played at in my life. The game was so bad. I mean, it was so slow. There was hardly any action. And uh, it slowly started to turn, but it took what felt like a century to get to that point. Anyways. I'm under the gun, we're playing seven handed. And again, I'm at that effective stack of $1,500. I go ahead and open from under the gun with ace 10 offsuit. Everyone folds except for the button who's just a complete character, it's whatever you wanna say. And we go to the flop. The flop is ace eight six with the ace eight of hearts, the six of clubs. I looked out of my hand and if I'm not mistaken, I believe I have the 10 of hearts here, so. We flop ourselves top pair and a bunch of back doors. Considering this is the probably worst ace I'll be opening from under the gun position, I wanna, ho I wanna go ahead and just get into check call mode. So I go ahead and do just that. This is a fairly interesting board texture because it is ace high. There are some straight draws and flush draws. They're definitely available for our, my opponent. And I think that I don't mind letting him bet himself away or just blasting off. So I go ahead and check and the opponent decides to go ahead and play along here. The opponent bets $65 and pretty huge bet, honestly, in relation to the pot. So this is very polarizing. At this point, I'm now starting to think, you know, what, what, what kind of range can I construct him to? I think that some strong flush draws are definitely in his range, as well as some hands like 9-7 suited 
as well as some better aces than I have, but at this point, there's just no way I can fold, so I go ahead and make the call. The turn is a jack of diamonds, so the front door flush draw still does not make it there. The only obvious straight draw that I see is still not getting there, as well as ace jack does find a way to improve, as well as jack eight finds a way to improve on this turn card. And again, playing with my initial way of trekking through this hand, I make the check. The gentleman yet again decides on a bet. The villain bets $125 and it gets back over to me. And again, considering that only a couple of hands are now getting for sure better than me. And again, I don't think I can just fold just yet, especially with the price being a little more reasonable in the turn. I go ahead and make the call. The river comes a really interesting card. It's a four. What I mean by interesting is that not much has really changed. The straight draws that were pretty obvious still break out. All the flush draws still break out. And when I check it over to him, and he decides to bet $500, goes for a huge sizing here, it puts me in the ultimate cage. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know what hand he can possibly have here to be able to bet what is like two, two X pot. I don't even know. It's so big. It's just so absurd. I couldn't even understand it really. And I'm, I'm going over the, the hands and, and obviously when you polarize yourself, he's got to have some kind of nutted, I don't even know. I don't even know what nutted hands he can have on this river. What, I'm, the straights miss, the flushes miss, and that's why I'm so confused. And it makes sense and his sizing is incredible, I guess. So, so after a bit of thinking, I go ahead and make the call. I go ahead and see the bad news as our friend shows the 5-7 offsuit. So, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, I would have never been able to put him on that hand. It didn't even cross my mind. I, it was not on my radar, and get on him. <laughs> obviously not there today. It's an obvious straight, it is there. It's obviously a straight, but I just could not see it in my head. I just, I could not believe that I just lost a hand to that hand. So, I don't know. Let's just, let's move on. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the table has officially just changed. It went from a terrible table. I asked for a seat change, actually. It was one of the worst poker tables I've been in a while. Everybody was just like a reg, super whack, playing no hands. And whoo, we're in for a doozy. Hopefully, we can get into a crazy pot. I got to run to my seat. I just table changed. There is quite the action player in the game, and we need to make some money off him. Let's see what happens. As you guys can see, we're a few hands in and we have definitely been in the cage or the blender, as some would say. At this point, we are playing six-handed, under the gun playing with around about $900, effective, decides to limp. Gets over to me on the button, I look down at 10, at 9 of spades, definitely not going to be allowing this to get limped around, so I go ahead and isolate to $50. Everyone folds except for the limper. The flop is king, 9, 3 with two spades, absolutely crush this flop. After he checks to me, considering I have the board so locked up, I think betting 30% pot to keep his entire range in is the most optimal play. So I go and do just that, betting I think $30 if I'm not mistaken, $35, somewhere in that range. After a little bit of thinking, I believe he might take this for a sign of weakness and decides to raise to $105. Again, no reason to inflate the pot. At the end of the day, I only have second pair. And I don't want to blow myself off my own equity because I have a huge draw here. And I make the call. The turn stops all the waiting. No need to wait or sweat it any longer. It's the deuce of spades. Great turn card here. And when he goes ahead and checks the turn, I'm now a little worried that he might have two things. Obviously, just an absolute air ball or maybe a hand that's just trying to quickly get the show down for as cheap as possible. So with all that being considered, I want to keep it relatively fair. So I go ahead and bet $225. Again, don't want to go too, too big. But again, I'm, I'm still trying to build a pot so I can get all of his chips on the river and leave him with around 0.8 to 1 to 1 stack pot ratio. He goes ahead and decides to make the call after a little bit of thinking. So we're off to a river. At this point, we're just praying no spade. Please, God, no spade. We've run super tilting to this point. My head's about to explode. If a spade came on the river, God knows I would 100% be deleting this poker channel. Please, God, no spade. The river's the queen of clubs. Absolute perfect gin card. If he had a gut shot straight try, it hits. If he had a hand like king queen, it improves to two pair. If he had a hand like queen nine with the queen of spades, it improves to two pair. 
absolute best river card you can ask for. And when he checks to me, there's only one option. I think about it, Hollywood a bit, and I go ahead and jam for his effective stack, $565. And without too much thinking, he decides on a call. Obviously, we're gonna take this one down after that little bit of pondering he had. He seems pretty upset, throws his cards way into the air, and uh, life's good. Finally getting on the winning roll once again. Super happy with the way that hand was played. I don't think we could have played it any better than that, especially with the way we were able to leave that stack to pot ratio on the river for the perfect gem. So as I mentioned before the last clip, we are currently experience, experiencing the dynamics of the table change with a complete psycho from Baccarat getting over to our table that has no idea what he's doing. He is just going bonkers at this point. Anytime this happens, the game is good. The, the it's Everything. Every, it's great. It's a good situation to be in. So, all that being said, I've been waiting for this moment. I just lost a pot to him. He called me down with bottom pair. Didn't even think about it. So, the action player and I have had a little bit of history. And this hand is no different. I actually request a seat change to sit over in the vlogger seat, which is seat 8 uh, or seat 2. You can sit on either one. It's the best place to get all the action for the whole table. With all that being said, gentleman is two over to my right, and he goes ahead and opens. And in the, the Commerce Casino here in LA, you actually have to post both the big blind and the small blind when you request a seat change, and you're effectively buying the button, even though it's in the small blind. But whatever the case may be, it folds over to the action player, and he decides to open to $35. I look down at four deuce of diamonds. Again, considering I already have $10 out there, there's just no way I'm gonna fold any suited cards here in the small blind. I go ahead and make the call. It gets over the big blind and he snap folds. So we're playing heads up, best case scenario against the action player. The flop is 10, four, deuce. I cannot believe my luck. This whole thing is set up. And the most ironic part about this is the guy just beat me with the same hand. He just beat me with four deuce. So I don't know if it's God just shining a light on my head as we speak at the table. I'm trying to control my emotions. And I'm usually pretty even keel at the table. But God knows there was like a freaking bolt of lightning that hit me. And I think everyone at the table could see it, honestly. Considering that I'm not a complete maniac, I do decide to play in flow and check to him. He just grabs as many chips as he can grab and just throws out $70. The important thing that you have to realize is when people that just don't know what they're doing when they do this, 85% of the time, they do this with a strong hand and a really strong hand. So I'm at this point, I'm pretty locked in. All right, he has an overpair. There's no need for me to go in depth here and give you guys a whole speech. I'm locked in. He has an overpair. He has a really good hand. I need to get as much money as I can in the middle right now. He's playing around eight to 800 to, to 900 effective. I need to get money in the pot right now. I go ahead and raise him right away. Don't need to change anything. The, the flop already has a flush draw out there if I didn't mention that already. So we've got to get the money in right now. I go ahead and raise to $175 and he snap calls. Man, I could not, he could not have called faster. The turn is a jack of clubs, so a pretty inconsequential card. At this point, like I said, I'm putting on an aces, kings, queens, something in that range, ace, 10 maybe. So when it gets over to me again, I'm first to act. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pressure to 1,000 and get the money in while the getting is good. I go ahead and jam here, and I jam from what is about five to $600. Honestly, I don't even know. Huge jam, obviously a huge over bet. There is only like $400 in the middle, and I'm jamming for like five, 500, 550, something in that range. Like I said, at this point, I just need to get the money in the middle. There's no way in hell he's gonna fold his hand, and I already know what he has pretty much. You know, he's playing his hand so face up. And again, he could not have called fast enough. It is in a snap of a second that he makes the call. At this point, we're just sweating the river. I already know it. I'm just saying, please don't pair the board. That's all that needs to happen. Do not pair the board. Ask and thou shall receive. The river is a five of spades. We flip over four deuce and he shows us pocket queens. We somehow find a way to win the pot. Thank you, God. Whatever you believe in, the higher entities, the higher power, 
Let's freaking go. I could not believe my luck. Oh my gosh. Like I said in the last vlog, it's crazy when you finally put somebody on a hand and they actually have the hand that you think they have, you feel like a goddamn psychic or something. But insane churn of events from what was going a really frustrating session and I was nearly pulling my hair out. One of the most boring games I've ever been in my life. Once we knocked him out, it was uh, it was bags for him, so it was also the end of the night for me. There was no way I was going to keep playing. The game was just terrible, and I decided to uh, rack up and leave. Incredible session with a lot of emotion, roller coasters. I think just by the way I was describing the hands, you guys could see how intense it really was. I just want to take this time to thank you guys all dearly. We are probably with this video going to go ahead and surpass 6,000 subscribers. An unbelievable feat. There's just not enough words to describe the thanks, the appreciation that I have for all of you. You guys definitely put up with my long rants, my really in-depth breakdown of hands. And uh, it, it's cool knowing that there's people out there that uh, really care about poker as much as I do. The one thing I will ask you guys to remember is please comment down below if you guys would like a meetup, your home city, your state, and your home casino so I can host a meetup game near you. Let me know if you're interested at all. I think it'd be an awesome thing to do over the summer with my birthday coming around. It'd be a wonderful time and to see you guys come together to give me an excuse to give out more free stuff. I mean, it, it just works out really well, I think, at the end of the day. Appreciate you guys all dearly. Enjoy yourselves. Stay safe. Crush at the tables. Run as good as you possibly can. Run pure, as some may say. And until the next episode, deuces.